Good morning everybody and welcome to channel introduction video number three with me Scruffy Joe. Um, so basically I reached 150 subscribers on YouTube and I was kind of happy about that and then I looked at um, Twitter and I realized that I'm getting on for 600 followers on Twitter which was really cool so what I did was I asked the people of Twitter to ask me some questions and uh, and then what I planned to do was answer those questions. In actual fact, I did do this, um, but it didn't come out very well for a couple of reasons. Firstly, uh, it was just me superimposed in front of some woods talking, and uh, I don't think that's that interesting, really. I mean, it could be more interesting. Uh, and secondly, I, uh, due to a bit of an unusual lighting situation, had a t-shirt which you could see the background through uh, so I obviously had the green screen of my t-shirt was sort of not really working out so what I decided to do instead is um, play super flight while I asked to answer the questions because uh, blimey that's foggy because why the heck not I mean it's a great game it's very distracting it's gonna make me crash um, <laughs> So, you know, I don't like this, it's too foggy. Uh, I need a random map seed. Let's go back to Mango Face. Um, right, so, question number one comes from uh, at, <laughs> at uh, Red Panda Pirate, which was the question, what is the best crisp sandwich according to Scruffy Joe? The best crisp sandwich according to Scruffy Joe is white bread, preferably of the bloomer variety, with a bit of thinly sliced roast beef, a little bit of salad cream to give it some zing, and some uh, salt and vinegar crisps. That's the best crisp sandwich in my opinion, and uh, obviously everyone's got an opinion, and all opinions have equal value, uh, i.e. none at all. Uh, let's just fly off the bottom of this because we seem to have missed it. That's question number one. Question number two. And um, possibly three. Uh, strange alien, uh, or at Danger ninety nine D. What is my favourite sport to watch and play? So I would say, in terms of watching sport, I don't really watch a great deal of sport. But when I do, it's normally sport that one of my children are taking part in. So I would say. Probably that's going to be my youngest son's football team is my favourite sport to watch. Uh, and I am actually looking forward to the next year oh, when I won't have to do the refereeing anymore. I, I might still be linesman. This map sucks. I'm diving through this portal. Well, that's very foggy as well. What's going on with the fog today? Uh, so yeah, favourite sport to watch would be football, but only when one of my children is playing it. Although that said... We are doing rather well in the Ladies World Cup at the moment, so I will be watching some more of that when it's on. Ouch. We probably won't beat the Americans. You know. Uh, second question, favourite sport to play? Well, that would be badminton. Uh, I am actually a member of a local badminton club. And um, so I play sort of socially for fun on a Thursday night and then I play a little bit less socially for more sort of sweatiness on a Sunday night and then during the season which is uh, kind of the winter time I normally have a match on a Friday night. I'm gonna pause for a second while somebody walks through behind me. Morning! Morning. Might have to edit that out. Not sure. Don't know how loud my daughter was as she came through then, but I did look away and say hello. So anyway, let's start this map again. Um, the last question from uh, at Danger ninety nine D. Ugh, is what is the science behind my beautiful hair and beard? Um, never really considered it to be beautiful. Uh, just sort of big but if I was going to claim a science to it I would probably say that the science of genetics oh that was nearly so cool 
uh, is responsible for my follicles and curls. Uh, I used to be blonder when I was younger. Uh, that is sort of sadly departed now. I'm now sort of brown. And this morning, really in need of a wash of the hair. But um, yeah, just regular wash. I don't know. Um, I did go through a time as a kid thinking that somebody was coming into my room at night and, and perming my hair because I did I had straight hair until I was about 12 and then by the time I was 15 I had kind of these curly wavy stupid locks uh, and the beard whoa the science behind the beard is uh, just a bit of a comb every now and again and some oil we'll come on to that in a minute though because the very next question is from Lucas Lab, the Lucas Lab, who is at Lucas Gamer. What do I do for beard maintenance? Um, the answer to this question, as I've just mentioned, is I comb it with a normal hair comb that you would have if you were a normal person for your normal hair. Um, and I use a beard oil that somebody gave me for Christmas. Um, and why do I use a beard oil that somebody gave me for Christmas? Well, that is to prevent my hair from becoming brittle because beard hair is a lot thicker and it has a tendency to snap if it gets a bit long. Um, so you've got to keep it a little bit oiled, not too oiled because then you look like um, Eddie Murphy from Curring to America when he had all the soul glow on. Um, which was a film in the 1980s which was very funny and probably completely inappropriate in many many ways by today's standards but we won't worry about that because standards change and I'm getting on um, so yeah just a bit of an oil a bit of a bit of a comb um, I generally don't shampoo or condition my beard uh, I do shampoo it kind of maybe once a week don't really condition it at all though because I don't know, I just found it tends to go a bit funny. Um, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really going to go into more detail about that. It's just a bit of a strange thing. I am going to use my mouse and scroll down on my other screen, though, while this is just rewinding. Uh, okay, next question from Almighty Paradigm at Paradigm78. What made you want to get into content creation? Um... Probably the early onset of a midlife crisis, if I'm going to be completely honest about it. Um, it, it was, you know, I, I kind of dabbled with coding, have some ideas. I designed a board game at one point, which I then play tested with a couple of friends. And, you know, I, I just wanted to do something creative and because my job isn't particularly creative uh, and I, you know, I'm too old really to, to be worrying about changing jobs at this stage in my life. You kind of get to a stage in your 40s where suddenly to be looking for a job is a bit of a, why is this guy looking for a job? Surely he should have settled down by now. Um, people don't tend to like employing people when they're my age because it's like, well, what's gone wrong with you that you don't know what you're doing with your life? Just a, just a theory. It may not be that true in all cases, but it's certainly true in, in a fair few. Uh, so yeah, so in order to not feel completely trapped and like my life was slipping away from me and wasted, I decided I would do something creative and bought myself a webcam and here we are, 150 subscribers le later, having a nice chat and enjoying ourselves. Um, it has really helped my life in a lot of ways actually because I, I was getting a bit down about stuff I was finding it difficult to concentrate at work and a bit bored slightly distant uh, and this has kind of really really helped because it's just it's very occupying to, to be thinking about oh how what should I record next how shall I do it do I need to do anything clever with it will people bother to watch does it matter if they bother to watch Oof. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's filled my head up nicely and now I'm having a, a much, much more enjoyable part of my life. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, next one, moving on. Casey Joe, what is your favourite game at the minute? That is an interesting question and it depends whether you are talking about the specific minute, right this minute now, right now, or a more sort of a general way 
Oop. More sort of a general now-ish, because I'm... I have various games that I like to play when I'm in various different moods. So if I want a sort of a very mellow, not really too much to worry about in the long term scheme of things, a little, you know, then I'll play this, because this is great. Um, if I want to build something, I've got a whole load of building games, uh, and it just kind of depends whether I want to build something where it's important that something's going to kill me and I don't die, or whether efficiency is the main thing. So I've got loads and loads of options, so I really enjoy this, as I've said. Um, I like a bit of City Skylines by Paradox, that's a good one, that's kind of low stress. Um, all you have to do is worry a little bit about money to begin with, but after you've got over the initial bit, it's good, good and relaxing. Uh, if I want to have some really serious worrying going on over a grand period of time, then I will play Stellaris, also by Paradox. Um, if I want to laugh at people's struggles, then I will probably either play RimWorld or um, Oxygen Not Included. Ah! Which was also the first uh, thing I ever recorded on YouTube. I've got a, it's like 24 or 26 episode long series on Oxygen Not Included because it's just fantastic. And it just scratches so many of my Oh, how do I solve this problem itches that I seem to suffer from uh, almost all the time. Oh, that was probably ill-advised. No, I'm still alive. Uh, oh, hello. Ow! So yeah, the answer to the question is a lot more complicated. I don't have one at the moment. I've got about six, and it all depends on my mood. I've also really been enjoying um, a return to World of Warcraft, which I played a lot about 14 years ago but I've just recently downloaded it and I'm enjoying the here have some free play until you reach level 20 so as a result of that I've got about six characters which are now all level 19 <laughs> uh, one day I'll, I'll get enough cash together and actually buy the game properly uh, okay moving on next question uh, or next questions in actual fact Super Helmbros at Super Helmbros he has asked me three questions um, question number one, which Let's Play of mine would I recommend to new viewers? Um, I think I'd probably recommend my Let's Play of Moonlighter. Um, Moonlighter is a great game, and that's one I just missed off my list of favourite games right now. Uh, Moonlighter is great for a number of reasons. It's fairly simple and straightforward. There's not a lot of, oh no, what's going to happen, oh no, worry, worry. It's more of a kind of a... That looks bad. Yeah, it's more of a kind of a reactive... Just, you go out there, you collect your loot, you fight some monsters, and then you run away or you die. Uh, then, having done all that... I'm fed up at this level, I'm going to teleport somewhere else. Having done that, you go back to your shop, figure out how much everything is worth, and sell it all. And that's it. There's only really those two different things in the game. But they're both done really, really well. Um, and it's, a, it's it's fun to watch me die. Uh, it's, it normally follows on from me going, Oh, this is a really good run. Uh, so yeah, there's been a lot of episodes which have just ended with me laughing. Um, and I, I kind of feel like if you can end an episode of something laughing, then you, you're winning even if no one watches it, because it doesn't matter. You've already had a good time. So yeah. Go and watch my Moonlighter series. Currently, I think it's up to about episode 11 or 12. Um, and it, we're, we're still going strong. Still loving that. Uh, we got some way into the second level of dungeons, which is the forest. It's, it's a good time. Give that one a go. That's question number one. Question number two from you. What have I learned about content creation now that I've reached 150 subs? Probably not that much, in honest truth. Um, I've What has changed since the first thing I ever recorded? Well, a couple of things. A couple of technical things have changed. I've recently gone and got myself a brand new keyboard, which is a lot quieter than the old one was, because it was picking up an awful lot of keyboard noise, which was really unpleasant. 
Um, secondly, I also got myself a, a boom arm for my microphone, so rather than it being on my desk, so I have to talk down to it, which I thought was a bit, a bit tricky, really. Uh, it was also very near the keyboard and the mouse, which meant it was picking up all of my clicks all the time. So instead, it's now somewhere up there, uh, which is, seems to be working much, <laughs> much better. Um, so that's that's one one improvement. Second improvement I've learned not to worry quite so much as I did the first time um, about what to say and getting the exact sentences right. And you know, everyone fumbles over what they're talking about, especially when they're concentrating on six other things at the same time. Uh, you can watch really, you know, what I would describe as professional YouTubers, and they will still do this and. So I think the main lesson really is to to learn to laugh at yourself when things go wrong. <laughs> As evidenced by that big hole that wasn't a hole, it was a brick wall. Uh, so yeah, laugh, laugh at yourself when things go wrong and enjoy the process rather than the result you were hoping for. Because you're going to be realistic about stuff. I've been doing it for what? Eight months, and I've got 150 subscribers, and things have been gradually increasing in sort of uptake and viewership. But it is gradual, and and also when you first start and you haven't got a clue about how on earth you to even get people to know that you exist, it can be a little dispiriting. So I think the other thing I've learned really is don't let numbers dictate your happiness. Ooh. So let numbers dictate your happiness because it's, I mean, you know, they're numbers. They're, they should have no effect on you. What I have found is I enjoy it when the numbers go up. Um, and I've kind of looked at that and thought, oh, this is nice. But I've tried not to worry about what the actual number is. If it's going up, it's fine. If it's not going up, eh, it's okay as long as it's just not going up because I'm not doing anything. If you're doing things and trying really hard and it's not going up, that can be a bit of a concern, but that's not something you should worry about. That's something you should take and identify and figure out what's going wrong and then slightly change what you're doing. So yeah, it, it, those are the things I've learned really. Not to get upset about numbers, be patient, enjoy it, and just do it really mainly for me. And the last question from Super Helm Bros is, am I getting scruffier? I mean, yes, probably. It's tricky. I have a haircut every now and again, and that makes me slightly less scruffy. Um, every so often, my, my my wife might want to kiss me, and that means that I'll have to trim this area of my beard. So that makes me slightly less scruffy. Very, very rarely, somebody will say, "You've got a bird's nest living in your uh, living on your chin," and at that point, it's probably time to have a proper trim up. But probably, I would say, on average, there is a general general increase in scruffiness <laughs> as time passes. I think it's also because I'm, I'm st I finally started to go grey in some places, uh, and grey hairs are they're just a lot more wiry, at least they seem to be, than standard standard beard hairs. Uh, so yeah, I got a few, I got a little patch of white down here in the neck area and that's you know it's getting old hey this is a bit like that place that you see in the nature play program morocco or something with all the weird jagged canyons i don't like it i'm gonna die here nah uh -oh. Oh, i should have dived straight down uh right next question auspicious turtle at the auspicious t1 What's my take on battle royales? Do I like them? Are they a genre that is overplayed? Um, okay. Hmm. My take on them is that they are not for me, um, and that's fine. I, you know, they are. If we all liked exactly the same stuff, we would only ever need one game, and then EA would be fine they, because they could just make it, and, and everyone would give them their money, and we wouldn't have to have loot boxes. 
because everyone would have the one game. But we're not all the same, we're all completely different, and I don't stand... I don't like this kind of, hey, you're not a real gamer unless you blah blah blah. Like, no, stuff you, mate. I'll do whatever I want. So, yeah. I personally don't particularly like Battle Royales. And the reason I don't like Battle Royales is because I played Battlefield when it was Battlefield, the first edition, on my PC, uh, when, you know, you had to worry about how good your graphics were and s turn the render distance down. Um, so that made sniping impossible. And also the lag back then was bad because we all had terrible broadband. Um, you know, this was like the very early days of not having 512k modems. So that was when I used to play it and I was rubbish at it. Partially because of lag, partially because of a lack of skill. Um, that lack of skill has not got any better even though this is a horrible map even though the lag is no longer such an issue um, I'm just gonna bail hang on Let's see if we can go through this portal um, so yeah I basically I'm, I'm not my reactions are not good enough then I got rid of my PC for a while and I had a console and I found that it's impossible to play shooty games with a controller uh, then I got a PC back again and I suddenly realized that basically it's just not for me. First person shooter games are just not for me. Uh, there's something... I like watching them. I can't play them. <laughs> it's just it's just how it is. Uh, so no, I, I personally, if you like Battle Royale games, then great. Enjoy them. I personally don't enjoy them so you won't really see me playing them. I did try Apex for a bit. When I say a bit, I mean four hours. And the result of that four hours was five kills. And three of those kills came from punching people because I couldn't find any guns. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Do I like them? I don't know. Probably. I like watching them. I don't like playing them. Uh, do I think they're overplayed? Uh, well, I mean, if you look at Twitch, um, then yeah. <laughs> I think there's, there's thousands of people. But if people are getting viewed oops I wasn't paying attention if people are getting viewed then they're not being overplayed I think if you're playing them and nobody's watching them then that's because somebody's probably watching some other guy some guy with sunglasses and a leather hat um, yeah Sorry, drifted off there a minute while I was concentrating on a very small hole and also trying to get a really nice, tasty combo. Oh, hello. Do you know what? This has just turned into a pretty good run. That's not a good idea. And I got 297 points. I had a 30,000 point combo. And I ended up getting 297 points. Um, right, Gilded Octopus, I think that is, what makes me want to play a game? Um, I, I just love playing games, I love escapism, I, I mean, wait, you know, I love, I do love mucking around with my family and my friends in real life, but they're not always available, um, whereas games are, uh, you can just sort of switch them on play to your heart's content, fly straight into a brick wall, no one complains, no one tells you off. Uh, so yeah, I, it's, it's escapism. I think it's quite a common thing for most people. Let's see if we can fly through this hole again. Whoa! Bad idea, Joe. Uh, right, where are we going? Sorry, I wasn't looking at the screen. <laughs> Have I answered all the questions? Have I? No. Uh, we have one last question from Sons of Abyss Gaming at Sons Abyss. And that question is. Oh, my screen's gone all weird. Sorry about that. 
That question is, what are your favourite hobbies besides games? Uh, well, I've got badminton, which I do a lot of. I've got skateboarding, which I do as much of as I can, and I'm limited by the fact that my knees are knackered and old, so that kind of puts me off. And I live in England, so it, it's often raining, and we only have an outdoor skate park near us, so a bit limited in that, but I do enjoy it when I do get the chance to do it. Weirdly, although it's lovely and sunny today, I'm probably not going to get any skating done either because it's ramping the temperature up to about 30 degrees right now and I think I might I might just need to go and sit in a fridge. Um, and that was hobbies. Skateboarding, yes. Yes. And board games, which I think I may have mentioned, certainly mentioned on Twitter. I'm a really big fan of board games. I uh, got a couple of friends who play board games. My younger brother also really enjoys a board game. And yeah, so we like things along the lines of Pandemic or Spirit Island. We're really enjoying Spirit Island at the moment. There's a lovely little two-player game called Japur where you're basically a trader. And that's really cool because it's a, it's a competitive head-to-head -head game. But at the end of the day, if you lose, you're still a mega wealthy trader, so you haven't really lost. You're just not the favourite of the uh, the Raja or whatever it's called. Um, well, so yeah, I think I think that's probably answered most of the questions, and I'm just gonna carry on doing this for a few more minutes. Well. Uh, just in case this becomes a relatively good score, because I can now concentrate a bit more without having to talk. Uh, and then, in a minute, I get the joy of going and picking up my son from uh, cadet camp, because he's been away all week. Whoa! That's very pleasing, isn't it? The green and the purple. It's sort of a bit like the Incredible Hulk. Ah! There we have it everybody, thank you very much for watching me. This has been channel introduction number three, the question and answer super flight flying extravaganza, if you want to call it an extravaganza, I kind of do. Why not? Extravaganza, go for it. Uh, yeah, have a look down below at various links. There's a whole load of Let's Plays in my channel. There's some indie games, there's all sorts of stuff. Just have a rummage, see what you like. Leave me a message, tell me how well you think I'm doing. Tell me if you think I'm doing badly, because I don't get a lot of constructive criticism, and I would like it, because it's helpful. Uh, yeah, so I will see you on Twitter, I will see you here on YouTube, and very soon I will maybe see you on Twitch. But look out on Twitter for links, and, uh, and I, I will see how that goes, probably a couple of weeks from now. Take care of yourselves, thank you very much for watching, see you later, stay hydrated, bye!